So the failed state of Chief Teresa Stan, that's what I'm calling the Attawapiskat Indian Band. I mean, it really is the personal fiefdom of Chief Teresa Spence and her boyfriend, Clayton Kennedy, who just happens to be the town's financial manager. So the failed state of Teresa Stan, after their hunger strike PR victory over the great Satan, Stephen Harper, they have now moved on to a new and more glorious target. They're blockading the road to the diamond mine about 100 kilometers away from their reserve. That's the diamond mine that provides jobs for 100 men in Attawapiskat, a town of just 300 families. So the political idiots who run this failed state are literally killing the goose that lays the golden eggs. There is no other industry up in Attawapiskat, of course, other than getting government checks. It's the diamond mine, and that's it. It's an amazing mine, though, and it has pumped more than $300 million into the reserve in the past five years. Here's the details on that. Since the start of construction some roughly five years ago, unless I'm mistaken, uh, over $325 million in contracts have been awarded to Attawapiskat First Nations businesses, and that's a community of only 1,800 people on reserve. Uh, 100 of the 500 employees at the De Beers Victor Mine are actually uh, from Attawapiskat, uh, so that's 20% of the workforce from that one community. Um, so those are those are examples. I mean, in, in in 2011 alone, more than 51 million dollars in contracts were awarded to Attawapiskat First Nations businesses. It's amazing. But the hundred full-time jobs and the 325 million dollars in contracts—that's just the tip of the iceberg. De Beers, which owns the mine, has practically adopted the town, fixing what Chief Teresa breaks time and again. For example, Chief Teresa has burned through. $104 million from Stephen Harper, but she can't fix the leaky homes on her reserve. I guess she's too busy hamming it up for reporters in Ottawa to pick up a hammer herself. And God forbid people take personal responsibility for their own houses. But instead of having a press conference or denouncing anyone or bitching, De Beers actually helped. When some homes on the Indian Reserve had a sewage backup, and when the three chiefs and 18 councillors and half a dozen paid staff working for the band had no clue what to do and no one could find a plumber, I guess, De Beers literally took mobile homes that it had used to house its own employees at the mine and moved them and donated them to the town. Free housing for nearly 100 people in a town of just 300 families. That's De Beers. They made a donation. I bet you didn't know that. I bet if you have even heard about this diamond mine, it was Chief Teresa bitching about them along with all her other complaints when she had her month-long reality show down in Ottawa where she hung out in a teepee and she said she wouldn't eat anything more than just finger food. Well, let me tell you what De Beers is really like. The company who just donated free homes to 100 people. Here's another quick example. Chief Teresa and her boyfriend are incompetent. I don't think that's controversial to say. I mean, he gets paid $850 a day by the band, plus expenses, but he hasn't even written up a budget for the town. I mean, these folks couldn't organize a one-car funeral party. So last year, when some modular homes were being shipped up to Attawapiskat, the geniuses at the band office forgot to bring enough gravel first. The, the homes were coming. And they were going to be put right down on the wet ground. In other words, they'd rot and get moldy right away, as so many others had. So gravel intended for the local school was diverted to the new homes, leaving the establishment of the school in limbo. So what did they do? Well, Chief Teresa and her boyfriend didn't do anything. The local member of parliament, that showboat, New Democrat Charlie Angus, he didn't do anything. But De Beers did. They were busy, you know, mining diamonds, that's what they do. But they saw that there was a humanitarian problem at the reserve 100 kilometers away, just like there had been in 2009. And instead of putting out a big press release or whining, they solved the problem. In a four-day period, working around the clock, using their own resources, their own staff, their own money, their own equipment, De Beers crushed 2 million, 2 million pounds of gravel that was suited for the new school. In four days. At the diamond mine. And they shipped it to Attawapiskat to cover up for the band council's incompetence or laziness or just plain don't give a damnness, whatever it was. De Beers to the rescue again. De Beers has spent $325 million in this band. They, they hire 100 men. They fix the toilets. They give them free houses. And they gave them gravel. And in return, the thugs of the band have blockaded the road to their mine. Oh, they did this before, some squabble before. In 2009, 
They blocked the road too. It cost the company $3.5 million. I bet you didn't hear about that because De Beers isn't a whining showboat like Chief Teresa and her $850 a day boyfriend. And now the road is being blockaded again. What road, by the way? You see, there aren't a lot of roads up there. Only in the winter, in fact, there's a special ice road. The rest of the year, you have to fly in and out or go up there by barge. But during the winter, they build an ice road, 200 kilo 280 kilometers up from Moosonee to Attawapiskat, and then another 90 kilometers from Attawapiskat to the mine. It's called the Victor Mine. De Beers covers that last 90 kilometers 100%, of course, but they pay a substantial amount to cover the first 280 kilometers also. 200 local Indians are hired to build this ice road every year. And, of course, it greatly benefits the town of Attawapiskat. This road, built each year, paid for each year by De Beers, this is the one that is now being blockaded by the band. Oh, I almost forgot. Remember I told you about the band special $8.9 million stock portfolio, the one that Chief Teresa didn't dare sell to pay for repairs to her leaky houses? The stock portfolio that owns shares in Apple and Google and Halliburton and Anheuser-Busch, Bush, excuse me. Uh, yeah, that was bought with money given to them, the Indian band, every 90 days in a special payment from, yeah, from De Beers. Why? Why is this band blockading the diamond mine? The company that has poured $325 million into the 300 families on the reserve. You do the math. That's more than a million dollars a family if it had been spread out evenly. Who would ever say anything to such a generous people other than the words thank you over and over again? Well, Teresa Spence would. She's a professional grievance monger. She's a professional complainer. She complained her way into a meeting with the governor general and then afterwards insulted him. She complained her way into a meeting with the prime minister and then refused to go ahead when he said okay. She complains about everyone and everything. You'll notice that she complains most noisily when proof of her own mismanagement and corruption is most evident, like when that Deloitte audit showed 81% of all banned expenditures could not be documented including millions of mystery real estate purchases. She was really noisy then, wasn't she? Pointing fingers at anyone and everyone other than herself and her boyfriend. She's not good at much, but she's good at blame storming, isn't she? She started bitching about the diamond mine a long time ago. Look at this weirdness, and I quote, Precious diamonds from my land grace the fingers and necklaces of Hollywood celebrities, unquote. Now, during her Atkins Diet infomercial down in Ottawa, she regularly bitched about getting more money from the mine. Except for that, of course, the diamonds aren't from her land. They're not from her reserve. They're from 90 kilometers away from the reserve. The only rights that Treaty 9 gives Indians there is traditional hunting and trapping, not traditional diamond mining. Indians didn't traditionally diamond mine before the white man came. The diamonds actually belong to Queen Elizabeth, and De Beers pays her a royalty for them. And thank God, because it's those diamonds that have made... The Attawapiskat band, or at least some of it, so rich. This is a shakedown. Just like she tried to shake down Ottawa. Now she's shaking down the best thing to ever happen to her people. I got a question. Where are the cops? I mean, if you shut down a big factory in, say, Toronto or Montreal, the cops will move on you in minutes. I mean, imagine 15 ruffians blockading the road to, to this. This is the, the Ford assembly plant in Oakville, Ontario. Do you think that would last? Do you think the cops would let such a place idle, uh, put in jeopardy hundreds of jobs and millions of dollars? Even if no financial damage happened, the law is the law, right? You think they'd let them blockade a factory in Toronto? <laughs> well, not up in northern Ontario, it ain't the law. You see, the police force up there used to be the Ontario Provincial Police, the politically correct cowards who let Mohawk warriors run rampant in Caledonia. But even the OPP is being kicked out of the Attawapiskat area by a new Aboriginal police force called the Nishnabe Aski Police. Hey, do you think they're neutral? In a showdown between an Indian chief like Teresa Spence and a mine, do you think the cops up there now follow the rule of law? Or do you think they make a political decision, Banana Republic style? I don't know what their decision-making rule is up there right now, but I do know what it was a few weeks ago when a reporter from Global TV went up to Attawapiskat to ask ordinary band members what they thought of their chief. Well, that reporter named Jennifer Tryon was arrested arrested by the Anishinaabe Aske police, literally put in the back of a police car like a common criminal and escorted out of town. And this was explicitly on the orders of the chief. That's not the rule of law. That's personal political enforcers with guns 
and badges. So peaceful reporters asking about housing conditions are arrested within minutes. But illegal blockades that just happen to dovetail quite nicely with the chief's demands, why they can stay there for as long as they like, no problem. <laughs> Attawapiskat, like so many Indian bands, is a failed state. So broken, so lawless, that it really is a free-for-all, awful to live in, difficult to work in, but perfect for a few to fill their pockets in. You know, we Canadians used to send observers and advisors to failed states like Afghanistan and Haiti to help them out. Huh. Maybe those countries could return the favor now. Maybe we could get someone from Haiti or Afghanistan to come give us advice on how to run an economy and a police force and a housing project out of Panatta, Wapiscat, because we sure as hell don't know how.